Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. In line of the COVID-19 regulations, please note the following. All in attendance must wear a mask. No physical greeting is allowed. Please ensure a distance of 1.5 meters for seating and when you leave this gathering. The congregation will not sing. We will listen to the organ, soloist, or instrument. All tissues or wet wipes to please be removed and take with you. All congregants seated on the right side of the congregation to exit on the right, and that all seated on the left to exit on the left. Members seated right at the back to exit through the main door. All congregants to leave the church premises immediately and no gatherings are permitted. In the event of contact and tracing protocols, the attendance register of the day will be made available to the Department of Health. Blessed service to all.
Let's pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, Almighty, Eternal Father, we bow our heads before you because we are here in your holy presence. We are thankful to be here, Lord. And we can come to you and give all praise all adoration. We can worship you, Lord, and those words are especially reserved for you, to no one else, because you are the great God, the loving God, our Creator, who have created heaven and earth, who have created us, and who have elected us through your grace. You love us with an everlasting love, and we are thankful, Lord, for all of this, for all the wonderful gifts that you bestow upon us. And so, Lord, we come today. Where else can we go when we experience moments like these? Challenging moments, filled with trials and tribulations. And here today, Lord, we come because there is death. And as a consequence, there's a loss. There's mourning. There's heartache. So many emotions, Lord, that's evoked in our hearts and souls. And here we bring to you, Lord, the family. Out of their midst has been taken a husband, a father, a son, a colleague, a friend, someone who meant so many things for so many people. And we can see this, Lord, visibly displayed, the impact that Llewellyn has had on the lives of many who gather here this morning. Not only here, Lord, but also connected through the various platforms. And, Lord, today we can also again take a leap out of his book, learn from him, Lord, and also pay our last respects to a wonderful man, wonderful person, wonderful friend, wonderful colleague. And, Lord, because of his death, also there is pain, there is loss, there is heartache. You have also heard the prayers and supplications of the family, of the, last, of the loved ones, each and every mourner, Lord, and we pray, please, in moments like these, when we draw to you, that we can draw so much comfort and strength out of your word, a word that has been prepared for us. Please, Lord, also wipe away the tears and where the hearts have been broken, please heal the wounded. Help them, Lord, that they can also, their joy can once again be restored. We pray for each and every one affected by this loss. And we pray, Lord, may we also experience a wonderful strength, word of comfort, of upliftment, and that you strengthen the faith and the belief of each and every one. And so we pray, Lord, please bind all evil spirits. May your word fall on fertile ground, have an effect on us, Lord, and help us and protect us while we gather here. We pray, Lord, especially for the technical aspect, for that which we use, Lord, to also allow others to be connected to this divine service. And we pray for a special connection with our leaders and our district director, our apostle, our district apostle and chief apostle. We ask this not because we deserve it, but all of us we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear bereaved family, 
dear fellow mourners, dear friends and guests, for this special funeral service, we have a Bible word recorded in Psalm 111. We read verse 10. Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do His commandments. His praise endures forever. My liever beroofde familie, vrienden, gasten, ons bybelwoord vir die godsdienst is opgeteken in Psalm 111. Ons lees die vers 10. Die vrees van die Heere is die beginsel van die wijsheid. Almal wat het beoefen, het een goeie verstand. Sy lof bestaan tot in eeuwigheid. So ver. Please be seated. Thank you. My dear brothers and sisters, dear family, dear sister Yvonne, Chad and Marcel, in moments like these we see and we experience the impact that Duwalen had on each and every one of us here present. We see how he touched our lives. We see it through those who gather here this morning. And those who really wanted to be here, when I arrived, I was told there's still many standing outside the gates as we speak, who wants to be part of a divine service or of the service here today. But due to regulations and the rules of government, there's only a certain restricted amount of people that we can have with inside a church building when we have an indoor gathering. And so some of them, unfortunately, have to be outside there are others who cannot be here physically, but they are thankful that they can connect through the various platforms that we use. And we say also heartily welcome to each and every one of them, and we wish them also a disturbance-free service. And so, if we all, if I would ask each and every one this morning to come up and share an experience of how Llewellyn impacted your lives, I think we can stand here, we'll be here for weeks and months and years on end because you played such a big role in the one or other's life. And we can all give testimony to that of the impact that he has. I can see it, you know, it's visible. 
what the man this man was. He was very young at age 44, as we read in the obituary, but even with that short life and experience, he leaves, he left footprints in our hearts and souls. And today, what do we have left? All we have are those beautiful memories. Those memories have been engraved and written into our hearts. Those memories, Chad, that's on your phone, that you can always cherish and value and appreciate. And those memories that will bring you joy when, in moments like these, moments in the future, when you have a real longing and that missing for my husband, for my father, for my son, until you want. Then you can reflect on those beautiful memories, the moments that we experience together as a family, as loved ones, as colleagues at work in the community. I have here a very short obituary given to me by the family, which I will read to you now. It says the obituary of Llewellyn Ricardo van Rienen, born on the 31st of January 1977 and passed away on the 13th of March 2021. Llewellyn Ricardo van Rienen is the son of the late Charles and Yvonne van Rienen. He also has one sister who had preceded him into the beyond. He grew up and completed his school years in Kills River, where he attended Kills River Primary, North Pine Primary, and Sarepta High School. He was an excellent soccer player, and I'm not too sure if there's any soccer players here in attendance this morning. Maybe he could have played for Bafana Bafana. Maybe Bafana Bafana would have, you know, could have um, done with a good player like him. But it says, besides the soccer skills, he was also an athlete, and he excelled. So he, he achieved Bolan colors for soccer and Western Province colors in athletics. After he matriculated, he studied electrical engineering at Wingfield College. Unable to complete his studies, he started employment at the printing division of Bolan, Bolan Bank Paul. This is where he met his future wife, Marcel. And what did Boland Bank, what was the last slag spreek geweest? We gaan ons bedank, Boland, Boland Bank. And today you can thank Boland Bank that that was the place where the two of you could meet Marcel. He was only employed for a few months, where soon after the South African police services called him for training. So he was called by SAPS, as we call it today, and he was called to surf, to surf and to protect. But nevertheless, their relationship developed from there, and their marriage was blessed with one son, Chad. And I say Marcel reflects here, he says of, even though it was only a short few months that they worked together, they would spend hours on end, and maybe Aunt Yvonne can testify and vouch for this, on end on those long telephone calls, so the telecom phone calls at night. You know, for hours on end you would talk, and those were the days before cell phones, before you, know, you had three minutes, and you would say, sorry, my airtime is up, I can't call you anymore. But they spoke, and I suppose also ranked up quite a few law high bills. Yes, Llewellyn passed away suddenly on the morning of 13 March 2021. He is survived by his wife, Marcel, his son, Chad, and mother, Yvonne. We, the congregation and ministers, wish the family our innermost condolences and much comfort and strength during this time of bereavement. And then I asked the family for some reflections uh, their own personal reflections of, of their dear husband, father, son. And firstly, Chad says, when I ask him, he says, you know, he has lots of memories, good memories of his father. And I think the one that stood out is the many fishing trips that they could enjoy together. And it was him and his father, and then it says it was also Uncle Dion, 
en Ankel Holland. Not to show where is Uncle Dion and Uncle Holland this morning. We have enjoyed the fishing trips together. And the last fishing trip was in February this year. And he says on that, on that trip, they did not go as far as they wanted to go, you know, because they ran out of petrol. You know, we know in the boat that's important to make sure that you can be able to go out and come back safely as well. But he remembers the first fish he caught, which was a red Roman, a Roy Roman. And that is a fish he had to give to Ma. No? And that Ma's job was to, to clean the fish. And those are those beautiful memories that you know, father and son could go out and come home and say, the weather's good, we can go fishing today. And they will go and they'll travel and enjoy some good time together. And then Marcel writes and she reflects, she says that he was a perfectionist, a place for everything and everything in its place. And yes, he say tongue in cheek, he could nag, he could nag a lot, but that is something you're going to miss, is nagging. And I think what I thought for you is your last birthday that you could spend together as husband and wife, which was a very special day for you, and you made it extra special for you in that, the way he treated you, where he took you out, and you made you very special, and that is something that you will always treasure. I showered you with the gifts of appreciation, and that deep assurance you have today that my husband loved me. You don't have to doubt that, and he proved that, he showed that through his gift of affection. Like he loved his neighbor, that shows as well today. And then, Auntie Yvonne writes that, you know, what, he know the path to her heart. He know the key to her heart, and that was coming back to the fishing, that she enjoys fish. And he would always bring her fish. And yes, next week, coming Friday, it's Good Friday, we associate with pickle fish and hot cross buns, and you can ask now, you know, now's the time that we need to make that fish, and who is going to bring that fish for me? Maybe there will be that missing and that longing, but to know that the son always brought her something, he brought her that fish. She says he was an obedient child, loving, a dearest child, and he would also say, I love my wife to bits. She says he was not the best, but he always gave the best. And he said to, she said once to the learners at school that my son never swore at me, and I will not allow you to swear at me. And when we reflect over the last words that he shared with her, he says, I love you, Mom. And she could say too, I love you too, my son. And that is beautiful, beautiful last words. So, dear brothers and sisters, when that's the obituary, and when we listen to his life, listen to some reflections, and I'm sure many of you can also share some experiences, but then you see and realize that life is short. 44 years we see in the obituary, and life is fleeting. We never know when our time will be, when our time will come. And today we have this gift, we're still alive. We do not want to wait for any special occasion in our lives. We want today, we want to reach out and say to one another, I love you. We want to go to our brothers and sisters and say, I forgive you, forgive me. Why must we wait till something happens? Because life is so short. We say, it says here that our life in scripture, that our life is like vapor in the mist. It's here now, and it's gone the next moment. It's like, remember when you have that steam on the mirrors? You know, as, as a child, I know you often would write, when you see the steam on the mirror, you write your name quickly. And I only have four letters in my name, so I can go write it quickly. But the moment I've written it, a few seconds later, a minute later, it's gone. And that's how our life also is. It's written here today, it's gone the next day. Let's appreciate what we have, where we are. Let us use our life to the best of our abilities. It says our life is like a caterpillar. You see this caterpillar crawling on the ground. And the next moment you see he's entrapped 
in a cocoon. What happens to this caterpillar once he goes into that cocoon? There's a metamorphosis that takes place, a transformation. And out of this cocoon comes this beautiful butterfly who will be able to spread his wings and fly away. And that is what has happened here. Someone who walked with us on the earth is gone, spread his wings, fly away. But we know, dear brothers and sisters, that death is not the end. That life only starts after death. And so also soon, we will also have to pass. We do not know our date. We know Llewellyn's date. It says here, 13th of March, 2021. Our date, we do not know. But let us live our life to the fullest. We know we are just but strangers here on this earth. Foreigners, aliens. Heaven is our home. And we want to prepare ourselves for that home. We want to make sure that our affairs on earth is in order. It says here in our scripture that, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This Llewellyn, who was blessed with so many gifts, and it says this gift, one of his gifts, that he was a good athlete, he was a good soccer player. And we see also the gifts that he had, the gifts that how he reached out to his fellow man, a man in service, a man who could stand in the mornings in front of a mirror, put on his uniform and say, this is my purpose, this is my calling, how can I help my fellow human beings? And I want to say to our, our men in blue, those who are on the front line, who put their lives and often put their lives at risk, thank you for the great work and service that you do. Thank you to each and every one in uniform. We appreciate it. Like Llewellyn, we had the gifts and we had those abilities. Now I speak to a family and what was, what was often said is how we would help others. Someone who called you says, I can't believe he's gone. I just saw him the other day on the road. He was helping someone who had a flat tire or a puncture and he was helping change the wheel. He was always there. And what was his famous last words? He says, no, don't worry, I'll sort it out. That was his way, they say, I'll sort it out. He didn't come to serve for himself, he came to serve for others. It's like this man who came to knock one day at the home of an old lady, and he says to this lady, there's a family, they're in dire need. They cannot afford to pay their, their monthly rent. There's no food, the children's going in hungry. There's no clothing. And soon they will be put out of their home. And then the lady says, okay, I can help, but who are you? Then he said, I'm the landlord. The man who was going to put out the family. Their brothers and sisters, can we see sometimes some people come for help, but it's only because they want it for themselves to serve their own purpose. This person that we know, Llewellyn, did he come and serve for his own purpose? It wasn't. It was for the lives, to touch the lives of others, to help others. His selfless sacrifices that he made for the benefit of others. That was his life. May we also learn from that. That it's not for our own interests, but we look after the interests of others of my brother, of my sister, of my neighbor, of those in your community, irrespective of their religion, their creed, or their beliefs, we help. And that's his, that's his life. And yes, when it says here of the fear of the Lord, we can think, oh, but, you know, what is this? Because fear sometimes is a different connotation that we can use. But I want to use the fear in the connotation, the light of how you feared God. When the servants came to, to conduct a sulky visit, to visit the family at their home, he would sit in. He would not move somewhere else and go sit in a separate room or get into his car and go somewhere else. He would be part of that visit and he would respect the servant that the Lord has sent. Even when he gets informed the priest is coming, then he would make a plan. He would do his utmost to make sure that he is also in attendance when the priest is there. And that is the fear of the Lord that he had. Dear brothers and sisters, may we also have that same fear of God. 
When we fear God, we do not have to fear anything else. If we do not fear God, we will fear anything else. May our fear be that we fear God. When we fear God, it says that's the beginning of wisdom. This wisdom is the wisdom that Solomon asked for. There's so many things that the Lord offered to Solomon and said, what do you want? And he says, Lord, that I may have wisdom. And how did he display that wisdom? He showed the wisdom. He showed the wisdom when those two women brought the child to Solomon, to the King Solomon. He says, both claim, this is my child, this is my child. And he says, fine, bring me the sword. And let's cut this child in half. What happens? The one woman says, yes, let's do it. The other woman says, no, rather give the child to the other woman. And with that wisdom from God, Solomon was able to discern that that is the true mother. The one who says, rather give my child, spare my child's life and give it to the other. I'll rather live for other child, but I have to see my child die, being cut up into two. And that's the wisdom that we also want to have also today, to choose for God. The wisdom to say, where can I go for support, for assistance? And that is simply on my knees. I go to the Lord in prayer. Then I will experience that wisdom that will help me to prepare myself also for the time for the beyond, for the time that will come after this earth. And then we want to say that that will lead us to eternity. Like this great athlete who had to participate in so many races, to be able to achieve and get Western Province colors. But that also came with sacrifice. You cannot go on a diet of eating only McDonald's and fish and chips and be an athlete. There's a strict diet that you have to follow. There are sacrifices to be made, practice and practice and practice in order to participate in the race. And when you participate in the race, it's not because you want to become second or last or just be part of the race. You come because you want to achieve, you want to be the winner. And so also, dear brothers and sisters, our life is a journey. We also participate in this race. And where, what do we want to achieve? We want to come first. We want to experience the overcomer's crown, the victor's crown. And that is what he can say today. I fought the good fight. I finished my race. Let us also continue while we're on this earth. Continue to fight the good fight. Let us also help and persist and persevere so that we can also complete the race. That we can also inherit the victor's crown. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, this service is followed by an earth burial. And from here we will now depart to the Valmut Cemetery. And I therefore ask you all to rise as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for these few moments that we could have reflected of the life of Llewellyn. Today we can truly celebrate the man, the individual which he was. Not perfect. Not not one without any mistakes and failures and shortcomings, but yet, Lord, he loved so much. He loved you and you loved his neighbor. And that was seen in his life that he lived, that he lived the greatest commandment which the Lord Jesus gave. And so we are thankful that we could have known him, we could have met him, that our paths could have crossed in some way or the other. And we can also learn from his life today. We will now leave, Lord, and we are thankful that you've also granted us a few moments of strength, that we could also draw comfort out of your word, and to be able to experience that your nearness is where you are very close to us, that you never leave us alone, that you are truly the good shepherd, that even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not have to fear that you are at our side, and that you will carry us, and so we will also carry this family, Lord, not only today, but into the future. Please preserve them, and may we also be carried on our hands of prayers, that we are there to surround them with our love, with our care, with our nearness. And so prepare for us now the way as we leave your house to go to the cemetery. May we reach that place also in perfect safety, and there we can have also our final last moments 
of this dignified farewell that we day, today we can give unto Llewellyn. We ask this not because we deserve it, but we ask all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I will invite the pallbearers to come to the front, and from here we will depart to the Valmont Cemetery. And while the cortege leave, I will ask our dear sisters to sing a hymn, please. Don't 